Hey everyone, it's Jeff Way with DetachedDesigns.com and what I'm going to show you today is how you can pass values from page to page using a few different methods. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the session, query string, and the previous page object. Now just off the top of my head there's one other method you could use. However, on my blog I wrote a pretty extensive article on it called working with the profile object. Now if this is a method that you'd like to choose, and it's a very good method, this will give you specific instructions how to do it. So just go to detachdesigns.com slash blog, come down here to view the archives, and you'll be able to find it right on that page. And it's called working with the profile object. So let's get started. First, we're going to work with the query string. So let's add a little bit of code. I'm going to add a text box. Give it a generic name. And a button. I'm going to copy this because we'll use it on later pages. So what we want is when the user clicks this button, and let me give it some text real quick. Okay. When the user clicks this button, we want to direct them to page two, which is a page we created, and we want to pass a query string to that page. And the query string will contain the value that the user enters into this text box. So in order to do that, we're going to double click on our button to get into the click event. And we're going to say response.redirect. Redirect. And we're going to send them to page2.aspx. And now we want to pass in a query string. So we'll add the question mark. And we're going to add the value of textbox1.text. So if the user puts Joe into that text box, it's going to send them to page2.aspx with a query string of Joe. So let's run this in the page. Oh, one more thing. Now what we need to do is in our page 2, we need to actually retrieve that value from the query string and, and display it on the page. So we'll add a label control. We'll just call it label1. And on the page load event, we want to populate that label with the value that's in the query string. So we're going to say label1.text is going to be equal to request.querystring and we need to explicitly convert that to a string. Okay? Let's go ahead and run it. Enter Joe. made a quick mistake. Let's see. Page load event label one dot text is request dot query string dot string. Oh, I'm sorry. Two strings. Okay. One more time. Okay. So when we clicked that button, it sent the user to page two dot aspx with a query string of Joe. And then this label grabs the value from the query string and displayed it on the page. Pretty cool. Okay, so that takes care of the query string, and all of these files will be downloadable from my blog, detachedscience.com slash blog, and if you can't find the page, just go into the archives. Okay, next, let's work with session. So, I'm going to paste in some of the code, and just change it slightly. And everything else will stay the same. Okay. So once again, let's go into the button click event and add some code. My computer will catch up to me. Okay. So we're going to say session. Now we're going to add a string, and this key 
will just be the string that you use to retrieve the value at a later time. So it can be anything you want it to be. It could be Jill. But we'll make it a little more applicable. We'll do text box value. So session we're going to create text box value and we're going to make that equal to the value that of text box 1. Now on our page 2 load event, I'm going to comment this out. We're going to add label 1 dot text is going to be equal to and we're just going to retrieve that value. Session text box value. So this will take what is ever in what it was, ah, excuse me, what's ever stored in this string and it's going to display it in label 1. Okay? Let's run this in the browser. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one thing. We need to actually redirect the user to page 2. Otherwise, it'll just push back to itself. So response, redirect, page 2, space. Okay. Redirect. Okay. So, the label control this time went into the session, it went in and found the key with text box value, and it took the value that's stored in there and displayed it on the page for you. Okay, so we've done query string, we've done session. Now I'm going to show you how to use the previous page object. Paste in our code. Now there's one feature that's different. Now with the previous page object, we're going to post, we're going to utilize the postback URL property on the previous page. So we're going to go postback URL is going to be equal to page 2. So when the user clicks this button, it's not just going to post back to itself. It's going to actually redirect the user to page 2.aspx. And then on page 2, we'll retrieve the value. So page 2, comment this out, label1.text is going to be equal to previous page, and we're going to find a control. Now with find control, we're going to search the controls on the previous page, which will be this page, and we need to search for an ID. So we're going to grab text box 1. So previous page.find control, find a control with an ID of text box 1. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to convert it. Because we're grabbing it from another page, we have to tell it, the server exactly what kind of control it is. So it's going to be a text box. So we're going to convert it using C type to a text box. And then we don't just want the text box to be equal to, be to label one.txt, or that would produce an error. We want the value of the text box. So we want the text value. So we need to add. do it for that example. View in browser. Okay. So this time we use the previous page object to grab that value. So I hope this helped you. If you have any more questions or if you have some comments, I always appreciate new readers on my blog at detacheddesigns.com slash blog. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good day.